All right, I guess we may as well get started. Um, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, WordPress for Beginners. Um, this is a class that I've been working on for the past year or so. Uh, as I said uh, earlier when we talked, to the last time that I presented, I've only presented this one last time, which was at the Small Business Development Center in Farmingdale, and uh, it seemed to go over pretty well. So this is very much a beginner's kind of introduction to WordPress. So just to kind of get you familiar with what it is, talk about a lot of the different um, uh, talk about a lot of the different uh, things that you'll need to know if you want to have run your own WordPress website, and, and um, you know just to answer any questions you might have. Um, so we've allotted two hours for this. Uh, if we get through these slides and you're still interested, well, I, we can talk a little bit about uh, some of the practical stuff. And um, as always. With any of these type of things, uh, if anybody has any questions uh, as I'm going through this, please feel free to ask. You know, it's, I don't want to zip past something that you thought was important or you didn't get. Um, you know, just please just, you know, put your hand up or shout out, whatever. We won't stand on ceremony. All right. So, uh, my name is Gary Weiner. Um, I have a small web development business uh, called PCQB.com. Uh, PCQB.com doesn't stand for anything in particular. Uh, it's, a, it's a question I get from time to time. Uh, it's a domain I bought back in 1998 because I thought it was really cool sounding. You know, it was a four-letter domain. I thought it was interesting, and I would use it for something. And so now I use it for my web development business. Um, I've been doing web development since um, the early 90s. Uh, I started out doing uh, basic HTML, a bunch of that kind of stuff. I wrote a lot of... Um, a lot of the early programs that the banks used, some banks, not all banks, but some banks used for mortgage rate calculation and that sort of thing um, back in the in the mid 90s and stuff like that. And I gravitated to other things, and then I, and I started my own shop. And uh, I'm doing WordPress since about 2005, and I've been doing only WordPress since you know, late 2000s. So that's basically mostly what I do now. I don't really do any other web programming. Uh, Except for WordPress, WordPress is pretty much all my business, and it's because um, it's very popular. So um, I'd like you to take note of the URL up there on the screen, uh, pcqp.com/classnotes. Um, on that uh, on that page, you will find links. There's some links there now. I'm going to be adding some more links tonight, tomorrow, to things I'll be talking about. Or if you have questions, I'll put links up on that page. There's also a feedback form on that page, and I would really, really appreciate it if you would just fill out the feedback form and just let me know what you thought about the class. You know, if you didn't like it, that's fine. Just tell me. I'm, like I said, I'm trying to develop this and make it better for everybody, so I need your feedback. Uh, okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's the objective of this class. And so um, when this class is over, we would I would like you to have a, be in one of these four um, decision-making boxes. Um, that you're going to uh, pursue WordPress and go it alone, do it yourself, which is great. Um, you're going to get more training. As I said, there's a hopefully there'll be another class uh, which is going to be uh, a little bit more hands-on. Uh, or there's other places you get more training. There's Udemy. There's uh, a lot of online resources. I also offer one-on-one -on -one training um, if you're interested in that. Um, uh, you could hire somebody else to do it, and there are certainly plenty of people who do WordPress, including myself. There's a lot of people who do that. Um, or perhaps after after going through this class, you'll decide that you don't think WordPress is for you, and you want to use something else, and that's fine too. Um, WordPress is the most popular word um, web platform in the world right now, with uh, depending on whose number you believe somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of all websites are WordPress. Um, but that means that somewhere between 80, 70, 80 percent of words websites in the world don't run WordPress. So if you make a decision that you don't think WordPress is for you, um, that's a legitimate decision after we're going to discuss it here today. Okay. So just a quick overview of what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what is WordPress, uh, what exactly is it, uh, what's for uh, a little history. Uh, we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages. 
We're going to talk a little bit about what you need to get started. We're going to talk about some of the content types that are uh, associated with WordPress. Uh, we're going to talk about the add-ons that you can get to make to, to improve WordPress or to make it do more of what you want it to do. Um, and then, if we have some more time, we'll do a little tour of the WordPress dashboard. And I'll uh, actually log into a live WordPress site and we'll, uh, we'll poke around a little bit and you can see what it looks like on the on the other, on the back end. So what is WordPress? WordPress is a content management system. What does that mean? It means that the content is stored in a database. It is not stored in individual files. It is not stored in individual HTML files or individual PHP files. All of your content, everything you write, all of your blog posts, all of your pages, all of your items in your store, if you have a store, all of that goes into the WordPress database. Uh, the site content um, is searchable. Um, so, you know, everything in the database can be searched. So if someone's looking for a particular blog post, or a particular item in your store, or a particular project that you worked on, or any other type of content that you might be putting on your website, they can search for it. Uh, changes can be made site-wide and on the fly, so you can change the look of your site, the entire site, in one go, uh, without having to go and individually edit uh, your pages. Uh, that is if you set it up correctly. Uh, some people do a lot of custom stuff on a per-page basis, and that's not always the best way to do it. And features and capabilities to this can be added, and the features and capabilities of WordPress are um, almost immeasurable. So we'll talk about a little history. So in the beginning, there was HTML. And as you can see there, that's a little HTML for you to look at. Um, so when I first started doing websites, the way we did them was we had individual HTML or HTML files if you were uh, running on a Windows server um, for each page of the website. So if you had, you know, your home page would be index.html. Your contact page would be contact.html. And so, um, for when once websites started to get large, this really became unwieldy, right? So then you had to manage, you know, dozens of pages. In some cases, uh, one of my clients who I switched over to a WordPress site uh, a few years ago had hundreds, maybe literally thousands of pages on his website that he had written over the course of the last 10 years or so working on this website. And just, it was a giant mess. And we ended up not porting the entire thing over, just select bits of the content. But it became impossible for him to manage anything or to find anything or to, you know, make changes on a global basis without, without you know, a lot of problems. Um, um, as things came progressed in website design, there were some ways to kind of get around this. There were, you, you had programs that would manage all the files for you. Uh, you had some other kind of programs that would, uh, you know, let you do things like have a custom header that all the pages would use, or a custom footer that all the pages would use, that sort of thing. Um, but in the end, it, it became difficult. Um, those were all kind of hacks. Um, so in the content management system, as we said, uh, the content is stored in the database. Changes can be made in the fly. Uh, the way we had a lot of problems and so that's why that's one of the reasons that we switched this now there's a lot of different types of content management systems we'll talk a little bit about that as we go forward um, but you know these days that's what you're going to use there are still a lot of websites out there that use the individual files um, I get them on a fairly regular basis um, but if you're going to pursue a new website unless you're going to do something that has like only one page and I you laugh, but a one-page website is a good website if that's the page where, where, where website that works for you, for your business, or for your organization, or for whatever. There are plenty of good one-page websites with like individual stuff within the website, whatever. And um, there are plenty of good. I've made one-page WordPress website. One page because one page is all you need. Why well, have more? So, what are the advantages of WordPress? And why should you? So, what are advantages? It's free. Okay. And free is great. You know, there are a lot of things that are not free. And 
uh, and it's free, it's WordPress, it's free in a lot of different ways, and we'll talk about the free that later. Um, it's well supported. Pretty much anything that you want to do with WordPress, I can guarantee you someone has already done. Somebody out there somewhere has done whatever strange thing you might be thinking about doing with WordPress. They've done it. And if you can find that person, maybe they've made it, maybe they've written about it, or maybe they published uh, an ad on it you can use for your website, you pay them for, or free. Um, so, you know, you're starting from a, um, you know, you're starting, you're not starting at the ground level. You know, you, you have a step up. And um, whatever you want to do with your website, you can find examples of someone else who did something very similar. And it really helps. And if you need help, there's online things you can go to. There's people you can call. There's a lot of people who know a lot about WordPress. And uh, it's good. And it's easy to use. Despite the fact that you feel you need to come to this class and talk and, and listen to me jabber on about a couple hours about WordPress, in the end, it is very easy to use. The barrier to entry is very low. Um, once you get it set up and someone shows you how to use it, or if you're a self-starter and you watch some videos and you do it, it's pretty easy to, to work with. What are the disadvantages of WordPress? There are a few. Security. WordPress websites get hacked all the time. It's not always WordPress's fault. I had a client get their website get hacked just yesterday. And I sent him an email. I said, Google's telling me your website's hacked. And why was his website hacked? Because he used the same password for his website as he used for every single thing that he ever the password. It was like his daughter's name and like one, two, three, four, or something like that. <laughs> so um, WordPress types do get hacked a lot. They're a tempting target because there are a lot of vulnerabilities within WordPress if you're not paying attention. And because, as I said, WordPress is 20%, 30% of the market. So if you're going to get concentrate on hacking something, you're going to concentrate on hacking WordPress because WordPress is more, very popular. You know, no one's going to concentrate on hacking some content management system that somebody custom wrote in their basement and no one has ever seen before, you know, unless it's some huge site that everybody wants to get on. So um, over feature, there are a lot of things in WordPress that you will never use. Never. I can say that, I can guarantee that. People add stuff all the time to both the WordPress core and to the basic plugins that people use. It's a lot. It's a lot. And it's a lot to go through sometimes. Sometimes you just don't know whether, what to do with it. But, you know, some people need those features. Uh, so it can be a positive and a negative. And bloat. WordPress can be kind of picky, um, depending. You know, it's certainly not as nice as using a very simple strip down, a few pages, you know, whatever. If you have just an HTML page, it doesn't have to go out to the database, doesn't have all this other stuff. And especially for sites that use a lot of what we call plugins, which we'll talk about later, add-ons. Um, add-ons can slow down WordPress a lot. People don't really know, you know, they just figure this is the way it is, and then their WordPress writes very slow. So there's a lot of positives and there's a lot of negatives. Okay. Um, one of the things that we're going to talk about real quick before we get into the other stuff is WordPress.com versus WordPress.org. And uh, this is a question that a lot of people have and they don't understand the difference. And it sounds like they're the same. You know, there's a WordPress.com, there's a WordPress.org. What's the difference and which one should I use? And the answer is very simple is that WordPress.com is a company that's owned by the person who created WordPress. Um, he owns that company, and his um, business model is basically similar to Squarespace and Wix and Weebly and a lot of these kind of companies that want to sell you basically website as a service. So they have a platform, you log in, you create an account, everything's all done for you. You don't have to install anything, you don't have to set anything up, you don't have to worry so much about like, hacking and whatever. And uh, it's free-ish, ish. It's kind of like freemium for those of you who play those free-to-play games, right? So um, some things they give you for free. So if you want to be, you know, your name is John Smith. If you want to be johnsmith.wordpress.com, that's free. If you want to have johnsmith.com, 
as your domain name on WordPress.com, you have to pay for that. The other limitation for WordPress.com is that the whatever add-ons you want to add, you want to put on it, they're very limited. There are things in WordPress called themes, which we'll talk about later, which change the design of your site. So if you use WordPress.com, you can only use their proof theme. You cannot use themes from any other source. You cannot even use all the themes on the WordPress.org. You're very limited. And as far as add-ins and plugins, uh, those are also more limited, much more limited. So um, you know, WordPress.com can be a good way to kind of like log in and and see what WordPress is like. So to be fair, WordPress.com also doesn't look as much like WordPress as it is as it, as it used to. Once you log in on the back end, it's quite different than the other type of WordPress. So what's WordPress.org? WordPress.org is basically the WordPress software. You download the WordPress software or you install it in some other way on your own web hosting account. And that's mostly what we're going to talk about today. Some of the stuff we're going to talk about is applicable to WordPress.com. But mostly we're going to talk about is WordPress.org. So it's self-hosted, which means you have to have a web hosting account, someplace to put it. Um, you must do your either do your own install or have someone do it for you. Um, you can, but you can run anything you want, any WordPress add-on theme, whatever that you like, you can run. And given the huge number of themes and things that are out there, um, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, and that's what I do for my clients and for myself. Is that's what I run. Um, but there is a certain amount of barrier to entry in there. You, like I said, you have to buy your own web hosting account, which can be as little as three or four dollars a month, depending on who you go with. Um, uh, you have to figure out how to install it yourself. All that kind of stuff, so. so, what are the alternatives to WordPress? Um, on the self-hosted side, similar to WordPress.org, you have to download and um, install your own software, where you have your own web hosting account. There's Drupal, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Um, but there's things that Drupal does that a limited number of things that WordPress won't do. I very much doubt anybody here needs that. But if you do, good luck. Um, there's Joomla, which is uh, which is which was very popular for a long time, uh, and a lot of people still like it. Uh, it doesn't have nearly the the uh, penetration that WordPress does. But it, it does still do a job for the people who like it. Uh, so you know, if, if you think WordPress is not quite for you, you could always investigate that. Um, static HTML or static PHP, which is what we just talked talk about a little earlier, having a lot of files. Like I said, if you have a one-page website and you never want to update it, uh, a static HTML one-page website might be what you want. Uh, you never have to worry about it. You never have to worry about it getting hacked. Uh, you set it up. It's basically, you set it, forget it. So, and then there's plenty of small, it's like a zillion little tiny CMS uh, programs that you can use um, that are some that are really small and light, that don't do a lot, and only a little bit. So, I'm going to go into that. And then there are services. There's, there's Wix, which I'm sure you've seen commercials for. There's Weebly. There's Squarespace, which is very hot right now. And, Jim Doe is one that I found also. Uh, and there's a bunch of them. So there's a downside there. Um, there's an upside and a downside from these kind of services. And I just would like to talk about that real quick. So if you're going to get yourself like a Squarespace website, Squarespace does a lot for you. They make things simple from what I've, what I've seen. A lot of people seem to like it. But the thing is that your website doesn't belong to you. When you are in Squarespace, the website is Squarespace. I mean, you own the pictures and the text and everything, but if you decide one day that you want something that Squarespace doesn't offer anymore, there's no easy migration path from Squarespace or Wix or one of those. I have a client who was on Wix, and we were trying to export her blog. She does uh, party planning for little girls, uh, you know, special princess parties, stuff like that. And so she writes a blog about, you know, it's party. It's, it's, it's very nice. So, um, but we were trying to move her website to WordPress because she wanted some 
functionality that wasn't available to her without either not available or not available without paying a lot more money. I'm not quite sure what the thing was. Um, but uh, they wouldn't, you know, there's, to move it out was we kind of had to do things little by little, you know, by hand, cut and paste, whatever. If you have a WordPress site, that WordPress site is yours. You know, I've had people come to me from other, uh, who, people who have other web hosting companies or other um, developers and they had a problem and they say, can you move my website and fix it? For me? And I can't because it's WordPress. I've also had people move on from me and get a different, you know, because that's the way it goes sometimes, which is fine. And they, you know, that's it here. Here's your WordPress files, here's your database, you go ahead and move it, you know. So, you know, when you have your own WordPress site, it's yours. You, know, you keep it. And, um, you know, as long as you're not, as long as you don't have someone who's unscrupulous won't let you have it back, even in those cases, you can still kind of I'm going to talk a little bit about freedom. Freedom, WordPress has two types of freedom. And both of these types are important. Um, in the open source world, we like to talk about these two types of freedom. One is freedom as in speech, which is important. And one is free as in if someone gave you a free beer, which is nuts. Um, so the WordPress is free, WordPress itself is free in both of these ways. And what I mean is this. That WordPress is free. You can download it. You can use it however you like. You can install it. You never have to pay anybody to use WordPress. But it's also free as in freedom because WordPress is open source, which means that you can take the code, not necessarily you particularly, but somebody, and if you don't like what WordPress is doing, you can make changes to the code. You can modify things. You can look at that code, and people can never take that away from you. Now, there are a lot of free tools out there that are free as in free beer, but not free as in free speech. For instance, if you go to Microsoft and you download some tools from their website, they, may, they have free tools you can use uh, on your PC, you know, system tools and things like that that you can use that are completely free, uh, that meaning no cost. But they're not free as in freedom. So at any time, Microsoft could take those away from you. You know, you can use them. Uh, at any time, they, could, they can say, you're not allowed to look inside the program that we wrote to see what we did or to make it better because it still belongs to Microsoft. WordPress and a lot of the things that come along with WordPress belong to pretty much everybody. They're released under what's called a GNU public license, which means basically everyone who uses, them, uses it uh, has to use it for free. And this creates some interesting things because there are things for part of WordPress that aren't free that aren't free as in uh, free beer. If some of the add-ons you do have to pay for, some of the premium add-ons. But those add-ons are, even though they may not be necessarily free as in free beer, they are still free as in free speech. So if someone makes an add-on available to you um, that you pay for, you have the freedom to use that however you like. You can go into the code, you can rewrite it, whatever you like, that now, you know, belongs to everybody because the public license says anyone who writes stuff for WordPress, they have to make their things that they make that plug into WordPress free as and freely available. All right, so now we talked a little bit about WordPress. We went over some of the history. Well, what do we want to get started? What do we need? All right, so... Before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about WordPress security. I mentioned this earlier, and it's important. So if you're going to run your own WordPress website, you have to know the keys to WordPress security. And the keys to WordPress security are keep your site updated. Keep your site updated. <laughs> keep your site updated. And then use a good password. Don't use your daughter's name and one, two, three, four, five. Please don't. Please. Um, why do I say this? Why is this the most important thing to WordPress security? Now, there are a lot of people who are WordPress security experts who fill up the screen with a lot of important things that you should also do. For most people, it's not really that important. There are all sorts of things you can do, like 
you know, make sure you change out your, your salt and you have a good salt and your big fig. And there's a lot of kind of, you know, lower level things that you need to do. You can have a security plugin, which can help you. But the fact is, most WordPress websites that get hacked either get hacked because there's some vulnerable add-on that people didn't update, or they used a bad password and see if somebody guessed it, or um, I mean, I'm not sure if you're aware of this. There are databases of usernames and passwords that are out on the internet that people who are, who are hackers have available. If you ever had Yahoo account, if you ever had any number of other kind of accounts that have been hacked, the password, username and password that you used for those services are out there in a text file that are available to people who are not very nice. And what they do is they'll go through it and they'll, you know, they'll try those passwords. You know, they may try those passwords on other services. Um, if they come up on a website where it seems like there's some sort of match for the for the domain name or the email account or something, they may try a couple of those passwords um, that they uh, that they have in their database. So uh, when I say use a good password, try not to use a password you use anywhere else. Uh, try not to use a password you've used for years and years. This goes for pretty much any kind of password security. But when I say keep your site updated, WordPress has a lot of add-ons, as we discussed before. A lot. Unbelievable. And some of them are very, very popular. And some of the very, very popular ones are not very well written. And so what happens is that um, someone will find a vulnerability. Um, there was a, a, a hack last year, last year, where uh, some financial institution got hacked and all of the information about all their clients got released on the internet. And the reason it was is because they had a uh, old version of Revolution Slider installed on their um, WordPress website. Revolution Slider, or Slider Revolution, is a program, an add-on, that you can use in uh, in WordPress, which basically makes fun slides. It's a great, it's it's very nice. It, it works very well. It's not, you know, and it's very popular. If you get a uh, second, -hand, if you get a, a third-party theme, it's a good chance it's going to come with that because everyone uses it. And some of the older versions had a lot of vulnerabilities, so they they're there are people out there who have web robots, and the web robots look at every website, and if they see an old version of uh, add-on that has a vulnerability, they'll exploit that vulnerability, and they'll install some badware, and they'll take over your website. So um, that's the most important thing you can do. Keep your site updated, and use a good password, and you're probably 98% safe. But, but. So, we want to get started. What do we need? Um, you're going to need to have a domain name. Uh, so, we'll talk a little bit about domain names later. You have to know what domain names are. And you're going to need a web hosting account. So, this basically is the domain name is the name of your website, whether it's johnsmith.com or thesiscleaning.com or whatever kind of website that you want to write. And the hosting account is literally the machine where the website is going to live. All right? So there are a lot of places that offer hosting. Now, I also want to talk about Local by Flywheel. Um, and this is really a great program for people who are very interested. Who are trained. Um, this is a really great program for people who want to try WordPress and they don't want to invest in anything, they don't want to get a hosting account, they don't want to get, you know, they don't want to buy a domain name yet, they just want to try it out. And there's the um, URL there, uh, I'll have a link to it on my um, uh, classroom notes page, which you should all go to after the web after um, class is over, I'll have a link to that tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, what this does is this is a program. It's an all-in-one program. You don't have to install anything else on your local machine. 
and it basically installs everything you need to run WordPress locally on your on your laptop or on your PC. Um, so you'll have WordPress there. You can it looks like WordPress. You can access it through a web browser on your local machine. You can log in. You can install plugins and themes and all sorts of things. You can try all sorts of crazy things. You can try adding pictures. You can try all these different things um, without it being out on the internet anywhere. So you don't you, know, you don't have to. You're not making any. First of all, you're not making any investment, and second of all, you're you're not you know exposing yourself to anything before you're ready. Now, obviously, you want to have your own website. That's not good enough. But it's if you want to try it out, I really I really recommend it. It's quite. A, there are a lot of other things that do a similar thing. There um, there's a lot of there are what they call uh, uh, XAMP and, and WinAMP and WAMP uh, that'll install um, uh, what they call LAMP stack, which is what you need to run WordPress on your local machine. Then you can install WordPress there. But this is all in one. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to go and install WordPress two or do anything like that stuff. Once you install this and follow the directions, you have a website and you're all good to go. So um, it's a little it's a little neater. Okay. So domain names. I want to stress this very much to everybody here. The moment that your, your domain name is the most important thing. If you have a website for your store, for your business, for your blog, for anything. The domain name is the most important thing. It's not, what this is. so a domain name is not actually where your site website lives, but it's basically a pointer to it, right? So uh, computers find uh, their websites, where websites live by going by their IP address. IP address is, I say, it's basically your, Internet phone number. It's a, it's um, you know it's four sets of digits with dots in the middle. Um, so you know what IP address is, but to know what that IP address is, you have to have the domain name first. The domain name does a lookup when you when you type in cnn.com or pctv.com, your computer goes out to domain name service. Says okay, who, where does this domain name live? Where are the name servers for this? It goes then goes to your name service. It gives you that number. Your computer takes that number, goes to the goes to the machine, and then a machine on the other end interprets where it needs to send you so that you get to the right website. Now, as long as you have control of the domain name, you have control of the website. You can always lose the content. That's sad sometimes. But if you, there are a lot of unscrupulous people who will sell you a website and they all, they keep the domain name, so you can never leave. Without losing all of the Google juice that you had on your old website, without losing all the visitors that you had, all the links, all the traffic, all that stuff, you have to change all that. So it's important that people have control of their own domain names. Uh, open up your own account, you know, GoDaddy or Namecheap or any of those things. Own your own domain name. Um, it's important. Okay, so what is web hosting and where should you get it? Okay, so um, WordPress web hosting comes in two fairly broad categories. Okay, there's managed WordPress web hosting and there's unmanaged WordPress web hosting. Okay. So managed hosting are companies like Flywheel, who offer that Flywheel local, WP Engine, and there are a bunch of and these companies are basically WordPress specialists. Okay, they manage your WordPress site, um, offer a lot more service than whatever, but they are also more expensive. The lowest uh, flywheel uh, that you can get their tiny package is like fifteen dollars a month, which is not terrible, but you only get five thousand visits a month for that for that price. Um, so you know, if you start your website starts to get popular, you can get expensive. Uh, whereas an unmanaged hosting can be as little as three or four dollars a month. Wouldn't necessarily recommend three or four dollars a month, but you can get away with it. Um, but the advantage of managed web WordPress hosting is that they do in fact manage it for you. As I said, I had one of my clients who has on Flywheel, the one who got hacked the other day. 
I just sent an email to Flywheel and they fixed it. They cleaned it up. You didn't have to call anybody. You didn't have to call one of these website cleanup companies or you didn't have to pay me to do it. They just did it. They fixed it. They're like, yep, yeah, there's something wrong with it. There it's fixed. Now. It's quite nice. But you pay for that service. It's not cheap. Okay. Um, I would stay away, me personally, from GoDaddy. Um, GoDaddy as a web host is not the worst web host you could get, but it's not the best. Um, there are a lot of companies that are bad and you should stay away from. Um, there are a lot, there's a big company called uh, EIG, uh, which bought a lot of small web hosting companies during the last 10 years or so, and they all stink them. They, they basically bought these nice little companies that had their own web hosting, um, you know, they, they, little mom and pop shops or whatever, ones you may know about, HostGator, Bluehost, a bunch of these types, like, they were all bought out by EIG, and they basically hollowed them out, and they're uh, providing, you know, they basically they give you very poor service. And uh, there are other things that I would say, I won't say about right now, but, um, uh, SiteGround is a very good uh, host. Um, they also offer like a managed WordPress host, but it's not quite as uh, full featured as the Flywheel. A2 Hosting is a good web hosting company. Um, I'll have some more links on my page um, tomorrow. And I also offer web hosting for my company. Um, I don't generally offer just standalone web hosting, but if you're actually interested in that, you can talk to me later. Um, I mostly offer web hosting for my development clients. Now you've got your domain domain name, and you've got your um, got your hosting account. Now we have to install WordPress. How do we do that? I'm not going to go into into in uh, in, uh, in 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 depth. We're going to I'll just cover it real quick. Um, but there's basically there's something called the WordPress five minute install. I'll show you what that looks like. There's an auto install. Uh, a lot of web hosting companies, even the ones, the unmanaged ones, will offer you something called either sort of tax off tactless or a bunch of other kind of all installers. You basically log into your control panel, you push a button, and WordPress is installed. You're good to go. I would certainly suggest that if you're going to um, get a web hosting account and do this, um, it's just it's just a lot easier. Um, and then there are some other options. So this is the five minute install. So, I think for most people, this would probably take more than five minutes. Um, it's not really complicated for me, um, but it involves you knowing what FTP is. It involves you knowing what um, you know how to set database. It involves uh, a few of those things, which are which I think most people don't know. Um, so, if you have some basic um, Unix system administration or some understanding of, of, of these different techniques, this is a fairly quick install. And to be fair, WordPress, there are a lot of open source programs that, that, are, that are really, really difficult to install, even if you know what you're doing, that involve a lot of work. Uh, this would take you five minutes, but for, I think, the average person um, trying to find a, uh, something, either someone will do it for you or Finding a web hosting account with an auto install is a better option. So, all right, so I've been talking for like a half an hour or so now. Anybody have any, any questions where we are? Any particular questions about what we're doing? Yes, sir. You mentioned the domain registration. Yes. GoDaddy is GoDaddy is yes. So the domain registrar that I see that I recommend these days is called Namecheap.com. Namecheap.com. Even though the name sounds kind of low rent, they are actually a very good and well respected company. Uh, I use them for all my domain names now. So uh, GoDaddy. GoDaddy's okay. For domain name registration, domain the GoDaddy's okay. But uh, GoDaddy has a lot of is a basically is like a big switch. 
So they'll charge you whatever it is, three dollars to register your domain name, and then the next year it's like fifteen or sixteen dollars. Yeah, uh, Namecheap is I think eleven or twelve dollars, so it's not a huge thing. So I guess if you you know after a few years, then maybe it evens out depends on where you and what you're doing. Um, but I I like I like Namecheap. GoDaddy's okay too. I, I would definitely not suggest GoDaddy for your web hosting. Um, if that's the only way, you know. Some people, that's really all they know, and that's what they have, and they're fine with it. Uh, it's not the worst. And if you have a website on GoDaddy, it's okay. But um, I would suggest one of those other websites. But for domain names, I would definitely suggest Namecheap. And there's no uh, there's no affiliate link or anything here, so I don't get anything you can go to. But... Yes, yes. Of domains, all of these new, it was used to be .com and .org, right. and now there's dot .everything. Right, now there's dot .everything, there's dot .us, and there's dot .well, I have like, there's dot .net, the first three that, that came out were dot .com, dot .net, and dot .org, right, so dot .com was supposed to be for companies, .net was for network providers of some kind, and dot .org was supposed to be for nonprofit. So that's people use the domain names for what they wanted to use them for. I had a .NET for a long time. Um, I still do. Um, Hatrack.net was, was the first domain name that I ever bought for myself. Um, that was my company for a long time. Um, so the question is, what about the other domain names? I honestly think that most people are going to be better off with .com. Unless you have something interesting that goes with the other stuff, um, there are a lot. There are, there are a lot of different. The, these top-level domain names there are two basic flavors, of them, right? So there's the ones which are kind of like the specialty ones now. Dot biz, dot info, dot auto. Um, so those are the. Uh, um, you know, you can pick one of those. I have a, a dot consulting. Okay. Like everyone's like, Ugh. yeah, right. I mean, it's not. It's not. It's. It, I think people had this idea that if they had like dot consulting or you know dot business or you know dot sports dot football I know dot football came up and I was like looking at that for a while because one of my clients is a football website but I think in the long run people are just I think it's just people get confused I think it will get confused the other type of top level domain name are the country ones which people see like dot TV is actually below or something like that. Now, so there are a lot of these uh, countries that will let you buy a domain name, small countries, and you know they sound like something else. I don't know. It's, it's, to me, that sounds kind of sketchy. Um, there's also .us, which some of my clients do use .us, and that's not terrible. I know it's basically it's the US one. One of my clients is ntrc.us. Um, they're a uh, recruiting firm. It seems to work okay for them. But I still think that um, .com is your, you should use .com if you possibly can, um, and, or .org if, um, if it's applicable, right? So if you have a small nonprofit uh, or something like that, I would definitely say use .org, because .org, I think, has a lot of cred as far as, um, you know, what, uh, you know, Showing what the domain name belongs to, saying that this is in fact a an organization. You know, I um, one of my one of my clients is uh, I work with the Diocese of Rockville Center on their uh, vocation site, and it's LongIslandPriest.com, and I'm like, <laughs> is it a company? Is that really? But you know, it's too late now. They've worked forever, so that name is what their name is. Yes. Um, I have to jump in again a little bit, but I was just I have a managing website for nursery. Yes. And we're just trying to figure out um, how we can maximize, like, if you're doing a Google search, how is there a way to do that in WordPress? Or do you use WordPress? Well, we'll talk a little bit about that after the. I, that's, that, that's a little bit more advanced than what we're going to talk about here. Okay. But I'm happy to. Once we're once we've gone through all the slides, we're about where are we now? We're getting close to the end. Um, so we went through these pretty quick. So once we get through the slides, I'll answer any questions you have, and we can talk about. Search engine optimization, which is what you're asking about. That's yeah, the. I actually did get my 
Um, sorry, is there a way I can contact you? Like, sure, yeah. or something like that? Yeah, yeah. We get the, I, have a, I have my cards. Anybody wants a card? I'll leave my cards here. I understand. That's no problem at all. So. Thank you so much. All right. And anybody who goes and fills out the feedback form on my website, I'll give you a free half hour consult. Here's my business card for anybody who wants to business cards. <clears throat> Where was I? Any more questions before we move on? So, as uh, I said, WordPress is a content management system. What kind of content are we managing? What are we doing? Okay. In the beginning, there was the post. Okay. WordPress comes from uh, a, it basically was a blogging platform before it became a generalized word, uh, website creation um, platform. And so all there was was posts. You wrote, you were blogging and you wrote posts and that's all you could do. In modern WordPress, there are two main types of content, okay? There are pages and there are posts. And there was a lot of other kind of content too. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but basically these are the two things and these are important to understand the distinction here. Um, because it makes a big difference for your website and how it's organized. So pages, what's a page? Pages are generally static content, right? So it's information about your company, you know, or information about uh, a particular program you might have or whatever. It's, it's um, pages should be timeless. They should be evergreen, right? This is information people are always going to want. It's not going to expire. People are always going to want to know, you know, what my hours are. People are always going to want to know, you know, what's on the menu. You know, people are always going to want to know, um, you know, how they can get in touch with me. Uh, you know. Pages um, should be modified if the information changes. Uh, so if your hours change, and you're on your hours page or your directions page, you change that on the page itself. So you go to your, you know, your, your directions page and you say, okay, now this is the new directions. Or you go to your hours page or you go to your staff page and you say, okay, this is our staff now. You know, we fired this other person. We hired a new person. It's new. Um, and page structure should remain consistent. Um, you know, you shouldn't just be throwing pages in willy-nilly. You should have an idea of how things go. Um, blog posts, are, as it says, your new articles, news, or other types of timely content, okay? We had a party, you know, we had a party. Well, let me tell you about the party we had. Or we have an upcoming event. Or, uh, you know, if you're writing about, for instance, if you had a, a, a website that was about a particular uh, sport, um, you might say, okay, you know, this is how this team did against that team. You know, it's an article I would write about that. Just like articles in a magazine, articles in a newspaper, that sort of thing. Posts should generally, and this is, this is, there are some exceptions here, should not be edited or modified after posting, except perhaps to correct egregious errors or other kind of issues. So you shouldn't be going back into your posts from like last month and changing them and editing the content, right? You shouldn't be doing that. If you have something where that needs to get done, then that post probably should be a page. Um, if post information changes, make a new post, right? So, you know, we're having, you know, we made a post, I made a post about this upcoming event, and then, you know, we're talking about it, and then things, some things have changed. Maybe I'll make another post about that event, or I'll make another, you know, another article about it. You know, we can have an event page. And if we had an event page where we had all our events on it, we could make changes to that event page. But if it was a post about a particular event or about other things that are upcoming, we want to just make a new post. You just want to add more stuff into the queue. And that's the basic. I had a client for a long time who didn't quite get the point between posts and pages. And it was uh, it's something that a lot of people struggle with um, because it's not necessarily always obvious. Which we should be. Sometimes it's a little bit of a, you know, it's a judgment call. 
came back to the post and so said, you shouldn't modify those. But let's say you have a piece of information. Um, I have, I'm open Tuesdays and Thursdays, or, you know, like there's going to be a thing. And then you realize, oh, I had to change it later. That delete the old post? You can always delete the old post if you want to. I um, mean, you know, these are not necessarily hard and fast rules. And in the end, it's your website. Right? We're mostly talking about best practices. So if you have a post that you made and you said, okay, we're having an event, put the wrong time in, go back and change it, that's fine. Um, you know, I would, I would probably, what I would do, and you see this a lot online, is if you have to edit a post because the information in there is wrong, right? Which, you know, we're all human. So that's what I, what I, what you, what a lot of times people do is that they, they'll strike out the, the old one, the old information and put new, or they'll put like in brackets, you know, edit, you know, on whatever, you know, to change this, just to let people know that they've made a change, um, you know, that you, that you, that you modify this in some way. You know, you have a slipstream modified and then people come back and go like, wait, I thought it said this. You know, and then people get confused. Um, as I said, in the end, we're just, this is all about best practices. You can do whatever you want. The word press police are not going to come to your house and tell you that you've done something wrong. And they do annoy. But, you know, organizing your website in a, hot, in a consistent and logical way is important so that people can find what they're looking for. Um, in the end, that's what you want. You have a website, you want people to find what they're looking for. You want people to find that information. Um, so um, it's good to try and and come up with a good, consistent structure for where your information is, is stored. Do, do posts usually have comments? Posts can have, yes. Posts pages do not, like, most pages do not, but you can have comments on a page if you want. Most pages don't have comments. Uh, but yeah, usually posts do have comments, uh, if you allow comments. Not everybody allows comments. Uh, comments are, can be good and bad. You know, it's nice to get some engagement with the people who are reading your content and to see what they think and to get that feedback and to get a little, you know, it's nice to get a little bit of, you know, you go boo to help people like what I wrote, they're happy about it, or at least they're engaged with it. But the internet can be a scary place. So, you know, you have to be, you have to be vigilant. If you have comments on your, if you allow comments, you have to be vigilant. You want to use an anti-spam plugin, we'll talk about some plugins in a bit, um, you want to use that, um, and you want to constantly monitor what people are, are allowed to post. You want to use some sort of uh, technique where you, you're going to approve, approve comments or, you know, people who, are, who have commented, you know, you want to make at least one comment before they can make unapproved comments or whatever. So managing that is a reasonable amount, you know, can be a reasonable amount of work because you have a popular website. But it's nice because it does let people add add their their um, you know their in, their input into what you've written, and that can be really valuable for a lot of things, um, you know. And it can be fun and enjoyable, you know. So um, just be careful. All right. Themes. Okay. So as we talked about. Uh, WordPress has a lot of different types of add-ons. Things you can add to your website to make it different, better, more, whatever you like. The first major category of these types of, of, of add-ons are called themes. And themes define the look and the performance of visual elements on your website. Okay? Theme is basically the design, or at least the design skeleton you're going to start with when you make the website. You know, it has information about how things are going to be laid out, or options for laying things out, how where your header is, how many widget areas you have, all sorts of interesting things like that. Um, and there's a whole huge marketplace of people who want to sell you themes. Okay. Um, Themes can come from, there are free themes. Um, free themes, most people will get their free themes from WordPress.org. If you go to WordPress slash themes, there's a zillion themes. 
people put them up there, and everything on WordPress.org is free for you to use. Right? You don't have to pay for it right away. Um, uh, as with a lot of things that come with the WordPress, uh, some of the free themes are um, they want you to buy the paid theme. Okay? So you may have a theme that you like, uh, something like Xerif, which is a very popular one, and the one that's available for free is called Xerif Lite. And then you install it, you go, okay, well, I want to do, you know, let you do some things, and you say, okay, I want to modify, say, some certain set of colors. He says, oh, no, that's, that's not allowed. You, if you want to modify these colors, then you have to pay. So you can use it as is for free, or you can pay a little bit more money. And, and the truth is that um, most of the themes don't cost very much, you know, $30, 40 50 $60 in that range for regular themes. Um, but, you know, um, you can always use the free theme that comes with WordPress. Uh, the current WordPress free theme is called 2017. Um, there are a bunch of older WordPress themes. Uh, every year they come out with a new one, which is named after the current year. So last year or the year before that was 2016, 2015, 2014, such and such. Uh, back to, I think, 2010 was the first year that they named one. Um, and they're all a little different. They all are, are offer some different things. One in 2015 was a magazine type theme. Uh, the 2017 is kind of a more modern theme with a, with a cover, uh, with a, a cover photo that you can use. Um, so those you can always use use those, and a lot of people use those, and that's all they use, and they all work well. Um, there are also a lot of specialty themes that are available from um, mostly from third party sellers uh, like Theme Forest. If you're going to get involved in WordPress, you should probably be familiar with Envato, which owns the Theme Forest, Code Canyon, a bunch of they sell a lot of WordPress stuff. So there's all sorts of themes that are available that are specifically targeted for whatever type of business, organization, or anything that you would want to open up. You know, if you have a fire department, there's fire department themes. You know, if you have a bakery, there are bakery themes. Are these themes always the best choice? No. Not necessarily. Um, you know, it can be a little bit lazy sometimes. You go, okay, I have a bakery. I'm going to buy the bakery theme and I'm going to install it. A lot of these third-party themes can be a bear to work with. And even if you are an experienced professional, like I am allegedly an experienced professional, it can be difficult. Um, they don't always get set up in the most logical way. Uh, I had a client who they called me in and they had bought a theme there. They, they for a um, a landscaping uh, supply company, and they bought a landscaping theme, and it was terrible. And then after a while, I said, I can't work with this. You have to use uh, the theme that I prefer, that I write most of my, my, my things, which is called Divi, which is a page builder theme, which can be customized for any kind of anything you want. Um, and I ended up making their site that, and it came up with this. But, um, you know, a, a custom, a, a third party theme that is customized for your particular industry or interest um, can be can be a, a real time saver and can give you a, a very professional look for a fairly small outlay of money relatively. Um, but it can also just be a giant pain. Um, I have a client uh, who I'm negotiating now for their new website and they have a theme that they really like. And that's a we want you, I'd like you to use that theme. And I said, okay. And so, but I first I said, oh, before I, I agreed to do it, I did my due diligence. I spoke to the company, I got them on chat, I asked them a lot of very specific questions about the design of their theme and what's available and how it works and that sort of thing. And after I went through that, that I said, okay, I think we could probably work with this. Theme. It seems like it's reasonable. But you're probably not going to, you know, you can do that also on some, on some of these sites as well, where you can ask questions, but you don't always necessarily get the best. So the answer for themes is always is just be careful. Um, you can always try as many of the free themes as you like. Um, if you have a WordPress website, um, there's a theme area inside your website, inside the, the dashboard, which will let you pick themes on the fly and just up change them. So you can try some different free themes and see if those work for you. There are a lot of different, you know, 
WordPress is a certain thing, but in a lot of ways, each of the individual themes are their own thing. And as much as they've tried to kind of cut, um, standardize the way you work with themes, they don't. It's not necessarily um, effective. There's a lot of kind of very customized things within themes where you have to look and try and find the what you want to change the things that you need. Plugins. Themes change the look, basically, and layout of your site. Plugins do everything else. And when I say everything else, everything else. The lady before was asking me about search engine optimization. Uh, SEO, search engine optimization, the most, one of the most popular plugins that, that people install these days is called Yoast Search Engine Optimization for WordPress. And um, it does a lot of stuff for you. Um, it helps you with uh, search engine optimization as far as individual pages, giving you some hints on how you might bite the page to make it more, um, more friendly for search engine optimization, analyzing the layout of your website. Security, commerce, um, for those of you who are interested in stores, um, the most popular, uh, uh, one of those popular themes is called, uh, plugins is called WooCommerce. WooCommerce is used in, I don't know, millions of stores, millions of online stores use the product called WooCommerce. And WooCommerce is also free, but the add-ons for WooCommerce are not free. So, um, backup, um, performance, enhancements to your user interface, um, e-commerce, and let's sit down Analytics and tracking. For those of you who are really planning to be serious about your website, you should have some sort of tracking in there so you know, um, you know, uh, who's coming to your website, where they come from. Forums. If your comments aren't quite enough for you, you can actually have a whole discussion forum. Uh, Anti-spam. People who want to do comments on their website and they need uh, some sort of anti-spam thing. Um, and the various different types of page builders to help you design and lay out pages. And this is just really not even scratching the surface. So like themes, plugins are available in a lot of different places. There's free plugins you can get from WordPress.org, WordPress.org slash plugins, and there's all these free plugins. Or free, you can also access them from your dashboard. Um, like a lot of the themes, some of them are free. I mean, they're all free, but many of them um, are uh, premium, right? So they offer certain things for you for free, and then if you want more functionality, you have to pay. Um, it depends. A lot of the theme, a lot of the plugins that I like to use are premium, but I find that they work fine with the, just the free version. That the paid version, while nice, it's not necessary. Uh, I use a plugin called Really Simple SSL, which helps secure your website if you have an HTTPS, uh, TLS, you know, security certificate, and basically redirects everything so that it's all secure. And I use it on all my websites. And there's a free version, and then there's a paid version I've never used. It. So um, some plugins are basically <coughs> crippleware. Crippleware. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you need to be aware that you know. You need to test it out first because they basically don't work at all unless you pay them. Something else that I want to talk about really quick as far as plugins um, um, and themes and other things like that. Um, there's been kind of a rash of, you know, you, if you get a plugin from WordPress.org, you're reasonably certain that it's been reviewed by the plugin. They, they have a team, they review them, all that kind of stuff. Uh, when you first submit it to make sure it's whatever. But the thing is, once it's been submitted, the subsequent modifications aren't necessarily as um, well scrutinized. And so what's happened sometimes is someone will buy a popular plugin and then they will modify it to do bad things to your website, uh, usually injecting some sort of links or something to, as a uh, black hat search engine optimization. So it's always important to keep things updated. Um, usually they find out these things fairly quickly and then it gets the same. But you have to keep an eye on stuff. This is the world we live in. Um, like I said, you can get your plugins from uh, WordPress.org. You can also get them from Code Canyon, 
which is a I mean, by Envato. Plus, there are a lot of people who just sell their WordPress plugin on their website. So, if you're searching for a certain kind of plugin or a certain kind of theme, it may just take you to one guy's website or lady's website and um, say, uh, you know, buy my theme, buy my plugin, and it will do what you want. Have to do your due diligence. I bought plugins from third party sites. Um, you know, that's all they sell is just that one plugin. That's fine, but you have to do your due diligence. You have to investigate it because a lot of shady people. Okay. Um, widgets. Widgets are kind of like their own thing, and I just wanted to talk about them real quick because it's, uh, it's not necessarily a fit into any other category I'm talking about. You see the red boxes that we have around here? Those are widget areas. This is a website that I made uh, some time ago, um, but it's the best example of widgets I could find. So widgets are basically areas on your website, um, and where they are and where, where you can access them are defined by which theme you're using. Different themes have different widget areas. But they're basically areas on your website where you can put different types of things. So you can put text there. As you can see on the bottom there on those footer widgets, that's basically just saying, you know, this is my website, this is who it belongs to, and we're not, you know, part of the NFL, that sort of thing. Um, we can also do things like, um, um, we can also, like a viewer on the on the right hand side there, you can see a lot of different types of widgets. Some of those are ads, um, some of those are uh, some text you put in, and then some of them are, are other things like uh, search boxes and things like that. There's a lot of different types of widgets. So some themes that you buy, or free ones also, are, which are all widget based. So there's no page, it's just a page where you, just, you can stick whatever widget you want uh, on their particular type of layout. So widgets are a little bit more complicated and uh, eventually we'll talk more about that in the next class if there is one. All right. I'm kind of sipping through this. <clears throat> all right, so that's kind of all the slides I have for you. Um, this is the WordPress dashboard. I just wanted to show show you kind of the layout of this. This is where all the kind of the magic happens, right? And from here you can see uh, a lot of different things about, this. once you log into the, when I talk about the back end of WordPress, this is what it looks like, right? So you can see here, we talk about posts and pages, there's posts and pages, you can make that whatever, uh, comments. Um, if you install more plugins, this thing can be huge. You can, you know, if they add like, here to this menu. Um, this also is important. If you have a WordPress um, a website, this here is the most important thing you need to know about. What is that? Anyone have an idea what that means? That's your update count. That's saying, hey, you need to update some plugins or some themes or something, that there's some uh, updates available. Um, so like I said, you keep your website updated. When you see that, you have to look at it. Uh, you know, see what needs to get updated and decide whether you want to update it or not. All right, do you have any, any questions? Any questions about, we're going to kind of end it a little early here, which is fine. Last time I taught this, I went to like, it took me two hours. People asked more questions uh, last time I did this, which is fine. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, yes, do you have a question? Just what do most people use WordPress for? My daughter used it for a blog. Right, so blogging is, for, well, I mean, people use it for everything, right? So you can use it for anything, right? It, blog is fine. I mean, that's originally, WordPress was originally a blog. You can use it for, like, a shop, say. Sure, a shop. you can use it for a store. Yes. You can use it for, um, uh, you know, for your uh, little league team. You can use it for any sort of thing, yeah, any kind of website you could make. You can make it work for us. Okay. Yes. At this point, like, how would you tell somebody starting to create a social presence? Yeah. To frame their business between having a website, having Facebook, having Twitter, having Instagram, mm -hmm. like, and linking LinkedIn, and and then linking it all together. Right. So if you're going to have an online presence, ideally, your website should be the anchor 
for your online products. <clears throat> and the reason for that is because your website belongs to you, right? Ideally. You, know, you own uh, mystore.com or whatever. It belongs to you. You control it. All of those other things belong to somebody else. And, you know, it's great to have a Facebook page with, uh, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of, you know, uh, followers and, and, and people who like it. Um, that's a lot. There's a lot of value there. But there's no guarantee that Facebook won't make some change to Facebook that will negatively impact the way that you use it. Um, you know, they have done this in the past. They've changed the way that people's wall works, their news feed works. Um, Twitter has done the same thing, Instagram, um, LinkedIn. So while all of these social media um, venues are important, they are, um, in many ways, they can be very ephemeral. You know, they, your website will always belong to you. you know, no one will control that. So, you know, if something happens, for instance, I know a lot of people who are um, who use uh, who YouTube, who are you know famous YouTubers, and they do YouTube. Uh, but then they have some issue with YouTube, uh, which has been very uh, very prevalent now, where people have content issues with YouTube. Things get reported, and then their YouTube channel can just go away. You know, you get three strikes on your YouTube channel, and it's gone. And all those thousands or millions of people who followed you, you know, liked your liked your page, that's all gone. You can never get that back. So people who are linked to your website know where it comes from. You always have a base of operations. Something goes away, your Instagram goes away, your Twitter goes away, for whatever silly reason, or becomes much less valuable. Always tell people to get stuff from your website. That's where you want people to be. That's where you do your business. Everything else is and that's my that's my opinion. Yes, sir. Let's say somebody wanted to build two blogs, yeah, like two different subjects, right? Right. Would they create a separate site for each one? Obviously, it depends, right? So it depends. Are do those two do those two subjects? Do they match up? Do you want to have a different? It's a kind of a branding, thing, right? That's more of a branding question. Right? So if I have if I have a blog about fishing and I have a blog about auto repair. Do I really want to have a blog about fishing and auto repair? Maybe. That could be fun. Or maybe you really want to say, okay, my fishing blog is about fishing, my auto repair blog is about auto repair, and I don't, you know, if I, even though I may link back and forth and try and give a little bit of like, hey, you know, if you're interested in this fishing thing, I, you know, whatever, I, you know, on your auto blog, you say, oh, yeah, by, by the way, I fixed this, and oh, yeah, and I, I went fishing, by the way, and if you're interested, you can read about that on my fishing blog. Yes, I think I would. Yes, you would. I would do. If you're going to make two different websites, two totally different websites that aren't connected, then I would get two different domain names. So the add-ons you use, are they the same? So the add-ons you use for that, do you have to buy them twice, or is it something? Some you products? do. It depends. Some you do, and some you don't. Some you buy. You can use it on all your websites. Some are you have to pay on a per website basis. So it depends. You know, there's no standard pricing for any of this. Right? So I use, like I was saying, my the theme that I used for for um, for most of my clients these days is called Divi. Divi, D-I-V-I. -I. It's called Divi, and Divi is a very high-end kind of like page building uh, theme. And but um, the developer license that I have lets me use it on as many websites as I like. The same thing with one of my favorite add-on plugins. It's called Gravity Forms. And it's really uh, great for any kind of form that you may want to make on your website. I have a payment form on my website that I use Gravity Forms for. People can pay me with you know, invoices. You know, I have a, one of my clients has a donation form. You can have just simple contact forms. You can have any kind of form. It has all sorts of logic in it. So Gravity Forms cost me a couple hundred dollars a year, but I can use it on as many websites as I want. 
um, and I'm you know, not limited. Unfortunately, like one of the caching plugins that I like to use on a lot of my caching basically is like a, a storage. You know, it's it's basically kind of making static versions of your website so that if you get a lot of visitors, it makes it easier to serve that that content. So one of the caching programs that I like um, has only only it's only you can only pay on a per website basis. They don't have a developer's license. They don't have a whatever. It's just you know thirty something dollars per website, and uh, the value proposition just isn't there for me to spend thirty five dollars on each of my websites. The the upgrade you know, it was a couple hundred dollars and all my websites, then I would say, okay, maybe, but, you know. So, you know, each plugin author um, has to make that financial decision on their own, right? So there's no standardized. But like I said, WordPress, part of the freedom that comes with WordPress is um, kind of anarchy, right? People do what they want. It's not like it's Apple, right? If you want to get you want to get uh, sell something on the uh, on the uh, Apple Store, you know, in iTunes, you have to conform to what they say, right? Everything is reviewed, everything is scrutinized, and everybody must do exactly the same thing. You know, if you have an iPhone, all the apps for your phone have to go through this process. WordPress is a lot more like Android. It's like the Wild West. People do what they want. You know, there's a certain amount of Review if you stick to the you know the more well lit areas of the WordPress ecosystem, but out in the you know out in the hinterlands, people do whatever they like. So it's good and bad, you know. It just depends on what your thing is. Yes. If you create a website on WordPress on your laptop, if you if you do it on the phone, do you adjust the size? Um, yeah. If you use a so the responsiveness that can, comes with generally whatever theme you pick. Most modern themes now are responsive to a certain extent, um, but that's something you have to do. And also, it comes as a part of the designing the site, right? So it's easy to, even though the theme may be out of the box responsive and adjust to the size of your screen, your phone, tablet, desktop, whatever you have, um, you can break that. Uh, in some themes, you can break it quite easily. So it's that you have to test. Uh, you have to make sure. Once it's done, that it does in fact do that. Um, like I said, I have a page builder. I use the Divi page builder for a lot of things. Um, it's really very hot, full featured, but you can really make things really bad. Uh, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. But uh, a lot of the themes which don't give you a lot of that customization are probably are safer. Because then you just say, okay, you put this here, put that there, put this here, and it's done, and that's all. And then you know, you probably okay. Um, but like I said, it's. It's usually, it starts from the theme and everything kind of flows from there as far as the response is. Yes? If you wanted to create a website for somebody, um, would you log on to their dashboard? How would you give them access? How would you? How would you uh, well, I mean, that would, that's a different kind of question. The question is like, if, I, if I'm going to create a website, how do I do it? Well, it depends. So if they have already a website, which is often the case, then they'll give me access. Okay. So there's a user management thing that's built into WordPress. I didn't really talk about that because that's really a little more advanced. Um, users. Um, as an administrator of the website, you can make more users. You can add more users. And so if somebody, usually I say, okay, someone wants me to look at their website, you know, and say, okay, can you fix this or can you get a new one? I say, okay, send me your credentials. And then what I'll do is I'll make, a, I'll make an account for myself. You know, unless, unless they're a little bit more savvy, then I'll tell them to make an account for me, make me an administrator account, or sometimes I'll talk them through it. So then I'll do that. Um, if they want me to make a website from scratch, then I'll just install the WordPress software on wherever it's going to be, you know, on the staging site or whatever, you know, my temporary site, and then I'll give them an account. And then when it's time, then I'll move it over. Um, so generally you don't want to develop on a live site because you don't want people to see you know, the mess until you're done. If you're developing a brand new site, there are add-ons which are called maintenance plugins. You basically don't let people see your website uh, until it's finished. And then if people want to see it, then you give them a password, right? So there's no there's no access to the website without a password. 
And so if you're developing a new website live on the internet, uh, which some people do, you know, then you can have that collaboration and look at things. Uh, then you leave, you know, you put the maintenance plugin in there and some people can't get past it unless they have password. Yes? If you did that, uh, like the sample one for fly, creek or whatever, yeah. um, and you have it all set up and you think, oh, this came out nice, can you then shift it to Yes, you can. Right? So, um, I would also like to talk to you before we go any too much further here. Uh, again, I want to mention this URL. Please go there and please leave me feedback. I really would uh, appreciate it. I'm going to have more links to things that we've talked about here. Um, there's also a link on this page, this class notes page, to the Facebook page for the Long Island WordPress group. So Long Island WordPress group is a group of people who like WordPress. Um, uh, our, um, our esteemed president decided that, that we needed to have a, um, not the president of the United States, but the president of the group. Um, <laughs> just want to make sure we connect it. He likes Twitter. Uh, let's, not, let's not say anything we don't want to, you know. Anyway, but um, the, uh, the, the leader of our group uh, made, you know, he saw that the, there was a meetup group and it was kind of dead, so we took it over. And so we have uh, about 40 people in our group now, and we try and meet once a month, more or less. Uh, we're working on, uh, ironically, the website for the Long Island WordPress group is not, is not active. <laughs> because, you know, Cabo's children always go without shoes. Um, so what I've done is on this web page here, I have provided a link to the WordPress group. Um, that is kind of the central hub for, for this, for us until we all get up our butts um, and make a, make an actual website that we would like to show to people. Um, but it's a good, it's good, even if you're not an advanced person, if you're a very beginning person, everybody is welcome to come and to ask questions and to talk about WordPress and whatnot. Um, it's, it's really great. Um, you know, some, some weeks when, you know, some, some meetings when there's not a lot of people there, you know, sometimes it just turns into a general big session about clients because, of, you know, when you, work, when you work in your house, there's no one to bitch to. But um, when when people who are uh, who are uh, less skilled show up, we love to help them because that's you know part of the WordPress ethic is to share and to give and to give back to everybody, which is one of the reasons I teach in this class because I want to share what I will learn with other people and help them because it's a, it's 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 all about the community. So, um, are there any more questions? For the plug -in for, is there like? Google Analytics. Yes. Something you set up. Yes. So Google Analytics. For those of you who don't know what Google Analytics is, Google Analytics is a service provided free, free by Google, so they can spy on you. Um, so it's, <laughs> but it is the value of it is probably worth the spying. I use it on all my websites, and basically what it does is it, it adds a little um, JavaScript tag on all of your web pages. So that uh, everyone who comes is recorded, and then you can go. They give you a very nice back end, and you can look and you can see how many people came to your website. You can see where they came from, whether they came from Facebook, or whether they came from Twitter, or whether they came from some other referring sites. You can see the um, uh, you know where they are, like what cities they come from. Um, there are a lot of there's a lot of good information there that you can find. So you can see, you can look at which pages, which of your pages are. Um, uh, are the most popular, you know, you can look at trends, you can look at all sorts of things. So if you have a website, you really need to have it, uh, or something similar, and the, the alternatives are not nearly as good. In fact, you can even see in real time many people on your website, which is probably not useful for most people, but uh, like I have a, uh, one of my clients is BigBlueInteractive.com, uh, I showed you their page before, uh, they're one of the top um, most uh, popular uh, Giants, New York Giants fan websites. Um, and we have, uh, you know, especially during like a, a busy day, like on a game day or on draft day, which is our busiest day of all, uh, we'll have, I can look and I can see that there are thousands of hits every, you know, every minute just coming through and you can watch it in real time as people come in and come out. It's very cool, actually. Um, certainly, if you have such a popular website, then congratulations to you. And that would be a useful thing uh, to have. But even without that, even if you just have a few visitors a day, 
you can get an idea of you know where they're going, what are they interested in, and you know what content maybe you should focus on. Then you know as far as that, you know, and where they might be coming from, so you can see if you can you know link back to them, or get some other information. You know, people coming from Facebook, people coming from some other website who might like you. You know, it's always it's always nice to find out. And then there's a plugin. So you, you set up the service on Google, and then um, generally I use a plugin for that, where I just type in my you know I set it up on a Google Analytics um, uh, dashboard for WordPress, and it just goes. Uh, but there are a lot of ways you can do it. They can give you a um, just, just some code. You can manually stick the code on your page if you don't have WordPress. You just want to stick it on there, or so they would just prefer to just stick it on there. Uh, sometimes. Some themes have that built in where you can put the word, we put the analytics code in there. Um, and one of the things about themes and plugins is that they can be a little mushy. The line between them can be a little mushy. A lot of themes provide functionality that probably should go in plugins. And um, a lot of plugins do a lot more theme stuff than they do. Um, any more questions? Yeah, so the WordPress, so you would actually install it. So the, you said database. So it's the contents on your local uh, workstation. If you are doing, if you are doing something that's local, then it's on local on your. Then it's local, right? If you are doing it on the. Um, if you are doing it uh, on the on a server, then the information is on the server, right? It all depends on where you put it. Depends on where you're installing it. So there's a database. The, the database that goes along with WordPress is called MySQL, or sometimes MariaDB, but it's they're both they're basically the same. Um, if you have a <clears throat> a hosting account, you'll see a way that you can get into that and look at the database. Um, you know, and that's where the data is all stored. So if you need to move your website or back it up, that database is the most important thing. Right? You can usually recreate most of your site. Um, as long as you have the database, you can, you know, you, you can reinstall the plugins. You can create the theme. If you have some custom code, hopefully you save it somewhere, um, and then you know, then you just stick in the database and you're good to go. Somebody send the feedback form. Get that? Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Probably till I get home. And are you thinking of doing an advanced WordPress? Yes, I am. And if I get a good if I get a good response here, then I will do an advanced. And um, how soon? How soon? <laughs> it's tomorrow. I, uh, I know it took me a long time to get this one. Honestly. Uh, so should we mention anything at the front desk? Yeah, just say that you want you'd like to have if you would like to have an advanced class. Um, the advanced the next level of this is going to be called um, adding content to and managing your WordPress website. Um, so we will go into more and more depth uh, on, into the content types. Uh, we will go more in depth into, so this is, uh, let me show you this, we will talk about the various how to manage your Word, WordPress website, things that you need to look out for, um, that sort of thing. And uh, so we'll do, you know, I have to develop that class. This class was, you know, I really need to kind of sit down and see what information people are interested in um, and what can be done. But um, if you are interested in that, then please let me know via the feedback form. And certainly it wouldn't hurt to tell the librarian that you really like this class mm -hmm. and that you would like to see the, 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 the follow-up to it. Um, and, then, uh, and then, you know, perhaps in the spring, uh, 
we'll do it. I think that they need to schedule these things like two or three months ahead of time anyway. So uh, it's not like I could have it tomorrow, uh, even if I hadn't read. So they, they need to, their scheduling is somewhat. So um, if you're also, if you're interested, I do have, those are my business cards are there. Um, I offer all sorts of different WordPress services. I offer one-on-one -on -one training. Um, as far as also as, uh, as well as website creation, any type of consulting that you might need um, for WordPress. So uh, if you need some help, um, I am here for that as well. Uh, if, you, if, you need, if you can't wait for the, if you can't wait for the class list, right? So this is just a this is a very this is a blank WordPress website, right? This is kind of what it looks like when when you install like a brand new website these days. I don't really know why these plants are here, but this is a so this is a this is a, a very basic WordPress website that has nothing added to it. You right? can use your own picture site. Well, yes. Well, obviously you can go. You can change it however you like. But this is what comes stock. So if you have a WordPress website that you installed, either you have a hosting account um, that you set up and you've used the auto install, however you installed it, this is what you'll see. You'll see Beam Driver is the name of the WordPress site. So whatever we called it, and my WordPress blog is the name of the. Um, you know, it's the it's the tag, right? So, um, let's see. Uh, interesting. Okay, so, and then this is the basic what it looks like. So these here, these here are widget areas. Remember, we talked about widgets. So there's a search box. It's telling me the recent posts. It's telling me recent comments. Your archives uh, and categories of your you know, various posts. We didn't really get into categories and tags and things like that. That's uh, something that's a little bit more when you're talking about content creation as far as posts go. And then if you want to actually get into the website, all WordPress websites, or most of them now, some people have a security plugin that moves them, which is just a pain, and I don't think really this makes any safer. If you type in, after the name of your WordPress website, if you type in WP, Dash admin. This is where you log in and actually do the work on your work on your work. So I'm going to type in my username. And then if you don't want to log in too much, you can say click on remember and you can say I remember the password for it. And I did. Okay. Outstanding. All right. So this is the live WordPress dashboard, right? And you can see here on the dashboard all the things that we talked about before. So there, we haven't really we haven't really installed anything on this WordPress website yet. We haven't had any posts, we haven't had any plugins, with the with the exception of this plugin. You can see here now that this is actually a little bit different than the other one. So this is the loginizer security. And Loginizer Security is a little plugin that basically limits the amount of times that um, people can log in to try attempt to log into your website. So you get three chances, and then if um, they fail three times in a row, they have to wait 15 minutes to try again. So um, the reason it's there is because the web hosting company um, that I use, uh, their auto install script um, installs that automatically. So. You know, you can see like we're not even getting to the stock WordPress just yet. We're just, you know, now we're now we've already started to add things. As you add more things on your, um, as you add more things, you will you will see, you know, more things add appear on your dashboard. But this is the dashboard, right? So um, we talked about posts. We talked about posts, so you can click on the post tag and you can say, okay, this is where my posts are. And then if you want to make a post, you can click on add new and we'll just make a, say, okay, we're going to make a new post and the uh, title is, uh, so whatever you like in here. So when you're this is the this is the basic WordPress um, entry area, right? So almost everything you're going to do is going to look 
something like this for now until they do Gutenberg and then they'll screw everybody up. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, it's, it's something that we'll, we'll have, if we do this, we'll have to talk about because it should be out by then. They're kind of changing how you do this or adding more stuff or whatever. Uh, there's something called Gutenberg, which is basically a page book. We'll not talk about that now. But um, so you have a title. You can put in the title whatever you like. Um, down here in this area, this is the content area. Okay, and you can see that it has, it's not that dissimilar from something like my course, like EFO. In, then you have buttons, you can do, you know, um, you can justify left, justify right, you can add a link, you have a, uh, you can add more, you can also, if you click on this button here, it gives you a few more options like um, underline, text color, horizontal line, strike through, here the formatting, a bunch of different things like that. So this is a very basic thing. So if you're going to make, you can just make any kind of post and just type. And it's uh, it's right justified now, so you can see it's it's kind of doing that. You can just be the left justified. So that's basically it. If you're going to write a post. That's all you need to do. There's a lot of things you can do on top of this. For instance, you could add a picture, and uh, set your featured image, select the file, you could add a picture. Open, upload it. So this is easy. As we were just showing you how to quick how to add a picture. You can see how easy all this is, right? You could probably, if you poked around, you could probably once it's installed, you could figure it out. And now we've set the featured image. And now if we do this post, if we publish it, send it out to the world, and we can look at it. We can see what it says. Click on view post. There it is. That's a big picture. So that's the featured image. It makes it this size. Different themes will use the featured image in different ways. Um, for instance, let me show you this. I'll show you this website here. Some of you may or may not be familiar with. So this. So this theme uses the featured image in a different way. If you put the featured image in, like we did here, the featured image, instead of being by itself, it kind of gets slotted in that area there. Right? And um, that's just one of the kind of minor subtle differences that you'll see in, uh, in a lot of themes. Right? Yes? So when you select the theme, you're selecting how people experience your website. Right, you are indeed. Okay, so like if you wanted a cover page that had like three separate ideas, but that would always be a fixed thing, is there a theme? I assume the answer is yes, but I just want to make sure that you could pick a cover page and then enter like, <clears throat> let's say cooking, parenting, blogging, and gardening. Sure. So you could have that's the top, that's the cover of your website. Right. Right. And then you, you would enter, but then if you clicked on let's say gardening, could you then go to a page like this? Right. You can click on gardening. Right. So the the way that that, that um, WordPress manages content um, is is uh, is actually quite elegant, and so um, you can have a front page that's whatever you like, um, and then you can have, um, we didn't talk about categories, but posts have categories, okay? You can see this post category here is medium length, that's medium length essays, right? So um, if I go to the medium length essays care, um, uh, page, and you can get there, it's automatically created when you create a category. It automatically creates a page. 
for all the posts that are in that category. So if I go to the media link essay uh, category, uh, category uh, you'll see that we will go, uh, we will see uh, all the posts that are media link essays. And you can see that. So we've got 